This is another edition of the interview series with the Pro Basketball Talk. We are here today with Jared Bergen from Wisconsin, six foot ten forward. How are you doing today, Jared? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for joining us. And I know you've been in Chicago for the past month or two, uh, you know, working out your game um, prior to the draft combine and the upcoming NBA draft. But I want to start back, um, talk a little bit about your past with your um, experience in college, and, and more importantly with Bo Ryan. Um, you know, how has he helped you improve your game under your first four years? in college with them? Uh, coach Ryan was a great coach. I mean, I really enjoyed, really enjoyed my time playing under him. Um, you know, his, uh, his defensive mindset and his defensive principles um, are something that we really relied on as a team. And you know, I learned, I learned a ton from him, you know, especially defensively and the, you know, things that will translate to any level. Um, and yeah, I mean, the way he uses big guys um, was something that I really liked about the program, you know, when I was initially looking at, you know, where to attend college. Um, he allows big guys to, you know, play play inside and out. You know, if you have the ability to to step outside and knock down a jumper from the outside, um, you know, he lets he lets big guys, you know, have a little bit of a little bit of freedom and a little bit of uh, versatility in that regard. So that was something that you know was a good fit for me, and that was something that I was able to to showcase over my years at Wisconsin. Now, kind of following up on that question, um, were there any aspects of your game that you had to adjust or? maybe adapt to something because of that system uh, where, you know, most most great players come from high school where you just dominate because the competition, the competition level is just not there. But when you get to college, you know, you have to adapt because you're playing with the best at your age group at that time. And uh, what were some of the things you had to adapt for Bo Ryan's system? Well, obviously, when you come into college, you know, coming out of coming out of high school, you know, it's, just, it's a whole new level from, the, you know, the speed, the physicality, um, and just the overall skill of all the players. So, you know, the first – you know, the first step is just adjusting to the to the speed and the strength of of the guys that you're going against. You know, in high school, obviously, I could rely on my on my size a little bit and just kind of shoot over the top of people. And you know, once you get into into college, you gotta you know work on your technique as far as you know uh, playing with a, a better balance, you know, better strength. Um, you know, to finish inside and so just being able to you know shoot right over the top of people, you gotta you know make a stronger move and and more fun, fun to, to, to be successful. And, you know, that's, you know, offensively and defensively that applies. You know, you got to, you know, work on, you know, boxing out and things like that where, in the you know, in high school I could just, you know, re- use my size and, and uh, length to, you know, to get rebounds. And, and now I had to, you know, in college you had to work a little harder for it. And, you know, I feel like that's going to be, you know, the same kind of step, you know, moving from, from college to the NBA is, you know, it's a whole new level. You know, everyone's bigger and stronger and more athletic and, um, so you just got to adjust to the to the speed and strength and and athleticism of the guys, and you know just take your game to a new level. Now you, you got you're fortunate enough to have played with somebody who's kind of done the path that it seems like you're heading down towards, and that's eventually getting drafted into the NBA. And, and that guy's John Lohr. Can you talk to us a little bit about your relationship with him with the first two seasons you were in Wisconsin, and has he you know helped you adapt your game or you know kind of guided you a little bit to what to expect going into off season and and so forth. Well, John's great. I mean, it's yeah, it, it is great to have uh, you know have a guy that that's gone through the same kind of things. You know, we're both we're both you know from Minnesota. We both played um, you know at Wisconsin, and you know we're kind of we're kind of similar in the way we play. You know, both uh, you guys you know six ten, six eleven guys that you know can play inside and out. You know, we both um, have the ability to shoot it from the outside, put it on the floor a little bit. Um, I wouldn't say where our games are, you know, identical by any means, but you know there are some similarities. But um, you know we're both we're both signed with the same agency um, with Priority Sports. Um, so you know before I uh, before I decided to, to to sign with Priority, um, you know I definitely talked to him and you know kind of learned what to expect. Um, you know what the training was going to be like, and you know he had nothing but good things to say about that. And you know he felt like they did a great job of uh, preparing him for the next level. Um, you know, so I decided to, you know, take take the same route, you know, go go with priority, um, do our training here in Chicago. Um, you know, Ryan Thompson and Josh Oppenheimer are the guys that have been working us out. They've done a they've done a great job. You know, we get a lot of a lot of good guys in the gym every day, so it's it's good competition and I feel like we've been working harder than anyone else, you know, in uh preparing for this process and you know, I think it's shown in my first couple workouts here. I feel like I'm in great shape. You know, I've been playing at a high level and you know, hopefully I can carry that over a few do the next few weeks and you know make a good impression on people leading up to the draft. Absolutely. You know, we talked to John Laura last year, um, doing a, you know, post 
NBA draft and NBA rookie season uh, interview with him. It was great stuff. So, um, you know, it's going to be a fantastic ride. But I want to talk about something that a lot of people don't really know about, and that's the NBA draft combine. You know, the NFL one's the one that gets all the publicity. Everybody knows about it. But no one really watches the basketball one. It's not, you know, as publicized. And, and um, you know, so most fans don't really know what goes on there. So can you give us a little bit about what takes place during that draft combine in, in a player's perspective? Well, I actually, uh, I actually didn't get invited to the to the big combine. There's the uh, there's the Chicago combine that, you know, that's that's kind of the one that everyone refers to as the you know the NBA combine. I actually didn't get invited to that. Um, there's only 60 people that that did go to that. So unfortunately, I, you know, I wasn't able to attend that. But then there was. Oh, I thought that. I saw you. I thought I saw you on the list. There, my mistake. No, that's all right. There was a there was another combine, um, the Brooklyn combine. They called it. It's it's you know pretty similar. It's more, uh, you know, it's a different. Um, a little bit different in that you played you played some five on five there, but we did all the you know all the same physical testing, a lot of the same drill work that the that the you know the Chicago Combine did. But um, I mean it's you know a little a little less uh, publicized. You know obviously the the Chicago Combine is kind of the big one, but yeah, I mean it's just a, a chance for guys to you know do some drills, do a little bit of a little bit of live work, not a not a ton of you know competition stuff, but um, just a chance for for teams to evaluate, get a lot of physical testing. You know, see where guys stand athletically, and you know, just let them get a get a first look at you know the prospects. Now, the, the NBA draft is less than a month away. It's actually a couple of weeks away, June twenty seventh in Brooklyn. Uh, will you be attending the draft? Um, no, I have no I have no plans of you know attending the draft. But you know, I think I'll just uh, you know I'll just go home. You know, back to Princeton, Minnesota, where I'm from. Um, you know, just have it keep it low key. You know, just hang out with with my family. You know, a few close friends. Um, you know, probably probably watch the draft and you know we'll see what happens. I'm not sure you know where I'll stand, um, you know, in the in the draft process. But you know, just hope for the best. And like I said, you know, I'll just take it day by day through the next next few weeks leading up to it, and you know, hope for the best. Well, you just uh, answered my next question, so I'll follow up with one more uh, silly one in this aspect. You're going to have someone there with a uh, iPhone ready to get your reaction um, if, if any surprises come up. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not really sure. I haven't, uh, haven't thought about it too much, but, you know, we'll see how it all plays out, and, you know, it'll be an exciting time. Now, talking about the NBA style of play with the big man, you kind of alluded it to uh, with Bo Ryan, and maybe that's why he's had some success uh, getting some of his big guys into the NBA because of the way the, the NBA big man has kind of evolved into a stretch four um, for the most part, and there aren't too many true centers left. Um, what aspect of your game do you think best fits in with the mold of the NBA big men? Uh, yeah, I think I think you, you you kind of touched on it with my you know my versatility. You know, like you said, uh, you know, there's not a not a whole lot of true centers in the NBA anymore. I mean, you know, there's there's definitely a few, but you know, the primarily guys are you know big guys are becoming more skilled. You know, being able to play, you know, not only with their back to the basket, but, you know, facing the basket, shooting from the outside, you know, putting the ball on the floor a little bit and um, just being being more uh, all-around players as, as opposed to just back to the basket guys like it might have been, you know, in the past. So I think, I think you know, I kind of fit in that mold. Um, we, I, I can play inside. I can play outside, you know, shoot it from the outside, um, put it on the floor a little bit. Um, I think I'm, I think I'm a little more athletic than people might perceive me as if you know if they're watching me at Wisconsin. Um, I think I've been able to show that a little bit in my you know the early workouts here, and you know like I said, just trying to showcase what I can do over the next few weeks leading up to the draft, and you know hopefully hopefully impress some people enough to to hear my name called on on the 27th. Yeah, absolutely. And even if your name's not called in 2050, you're, more, you're more, most likely going to be attending the Vegas Summer League, which has gotten bigger and bigger. And now they're going to have a, I guess, a little mini tournament, and uh, they're going to have awards, and and God knows what else they're going to do. But they're trying to make it into a mini league, which I'm a big fan of. It's a good event. It's fun to get out there and uh, network. Um, how much do you know about the Summer League, and are you looking forward to playing it this year? Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, uh, I've I've watched some games in the past. Um, yeah, I know that you know most of the teams play out in Vegas. There's also some teams that play in the Orlando Summer League, I believe. And um, so, yeah, like you said, uh, you know, depending on on what happens with the draft, you know, if I do go undrafted, um, you know, I'll take my pick of, you know, uh, of who I, who I decide to play with in the uh, <clears throat> in the Summer League. Um, we'll go from there. I mean, uh, yeah, if I do go undrafted, you know, there, there's other opportunities to get into a league. Um, you know, there's plenty of guys that go undrafted that that do have an impact in the NBA. So, yeah, that'll be the next step, you know, going through summer league. 
um, you know, that'll be a good time, you know, kind of uh, get your feet wet a little bit in the, at the NBA level, kind of ease your way into it and um, see, what the, see what the next level is all about. So, yeah, I'm definitely excited to, to get to that, and, yeah, I look forward to playing there. Absolutely. It's always a fun event. Now let's put some uh, less serious questions here. Um, I assume you've been catching some of the NBA playoffs and you had some free time during your training and traveling. Um, you know, uh, uh, have there been a couple of surprises this NBA postseason for you for, in terms of teams and players? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's always hard to predict. I mean, there's nothing, uh, you know, you look at, you know, I think people going into the playoffs, people all expected the Heat to to win it. You know, I think they kind of thought, um, you know, they were kind of hands down favorites. And I mean, they, uh, they definitely had, have had their hands full, you know, getting through, you know, the, the series with the, with Indiana was, was a great series. You know, that was fun to watch going down to game seven. Actually, I didn't get to watch, actually didn't get to watch game seven. I was stuck on flight. Um, I forget where I was coming from or going to, but it was, uh, yeah, I was disappointed then. I had to, had to miss game seven, but you know, as soon as, as soon as we touched down, I was checking Twitter and checking, checking out online and saw that they, you know, they won pretty easily, but it's been, yeah, it's been a, it's been a fun postseason and, um, you know, it's, it's exciting stuff. The finals, um, I think we're in for a great series here and, um, it's been a lot of fun to watch. Now, I think the only thing you missed from Game 7 was the Roy Hibbert Gatorade Challenge, where he chugged the 20 outs in about four seconds on the bench. So um, a lot of people have tried that now, and it's becoming a, vi- yeah, it's become a viral saw video. <laughs> I saw that, yeah, I saw that on Twitter. I think after someone was, it was like a, a Vine video or whatever it's called now, and it was, yeah, it's like a six-second long video, and he, he he downs it in that no problem. That was That was pretty impressive. <laughs> Uh, he's he's quite a character. Now for um, a couple of fun questions to get to know you as a person outside of your basketball world because with social media today and, the, you know, with everything that's out there, it, it, you get to know the, the athletes more personal. And, and I, I think it's fun because you get to see their personality and their character. Um, do you have a favorite musical artist or group? Um, I mean, I'm kind of a country guy, so I'd say right now probably my favorite group would be uh, Florida Georgia Line. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite movie? Um, boy, that's tough. I think uh, I really like comedy movies. Will Ferrell is probably one of my one of my favorite actors. I'd say uh, maybe Step Brothers or or Anchorman. Uh, some of those, you know, Will Ferrell is my probably my favorite guy. So some of his movies <laughs> uh, are definitely up there. Yeah, Step Brothers blew me away. I, I was kind of in that phase of getting sick of Will Ferrell. Then all of a sudden, like you kind of discredit his movies, like Semi Pro. I didn't give that a shot the first time, but after seeing a couple of times, it, it gets funnier every time. Um, yeah, do you yeah, have a, that's how I was too. <laughs> it's fun movie though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I quote it now, so it's awesome. Do uh, you have a favorite summer pastime? Um, I mean, when I'm not, you know, when I'm not in the gym, you know, working out. Obviously, you know, basketball is becoming such a, a year-round thing now. You know, there's there's really no off season. Um, but you know, when I do have some free time, I like, you know, growing up in Minnesota, I like getting out fishing, um, hunting, things like that. I mean, hunting's more in the fall and winter, but. Uh, Summertime, I like to get out on the lake, um, you know, go fishing, or just just hang out on the lake, you know, just out on, out on the water, getting some sun, and um, you know, just enjoying myself all day. Do you have a hobby that most people might not know? <laughs> um, <clears throat> not not really, to be honest. I'm kind of a kind of a laid back guy. I mean, I just like to, you know. After workouts now, like I, you know, I'm done for the day working out. Just got back from the gym, and now the rest of the day I'll probably just relax. Um, you know, watch some watch some TV. You know, I like I like watching different you know uh, TV series on Netflix. Right now I'm you know right in the middle of uh, prison break, um, so you know I'm I'm, I'm kind of bored and like that. You know, I'll just I'll just lay around. You know, watch TV, relax, and you know just hang out with friends, stuff like that. You know, I don't I don't do anything too crazy really. <laughs> Now, favorite NBA team growing up? Um, when I was growing up, it was definitely the, the Minnesota Timberwolves. I mean, like I said, growing up in Minnesota, um, right when I was kind of getting into basketball was when, when KG was, was coming up in Minnesota, and, you know, he was always my favorite player. And then, you know, even after uh, even after he got traded to, to Boston, um, you know, I kind of I kind of stayed with them, you know, just, just following KG. You know, he was always my favorite player, and I was kind of cheering for, for the Celtics then. You know, the last few years with with KG there. Yeah, I, I, I'm from the Boston area. I don't know if Eric had told you. Um, I had season tickets that year. They won, but uh, it was definitely riding. You know, I'm, I'm in the same age group as you guys. Uh, most of the prospects coming out, so 
you know, I, I don't remember those 80s Celtics teams. You know, I was one, two, three years old at that time. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so they didn't mean anything to me. So that, that was, you know, the first title. Um, and I get, last question for you. Do you have a favorite NBA jersey? Not personal, but like style of jersey, whether it's the 96 Raptors with the, the purple or uh, mine happens to be the Orlando Magic black with the white stripes. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a solid one. Um, I'd say the uh, – <clears throat> Well, the only, the only jerseys I owned growing up, I had uh, I had a couple different KG jerseys. Um, I think I, I think I still had those had those hanging on my hanging on my wall in my apartment in, in Madison when I was in college still. But uh, I'd say yeah. So either the I mean those those weren't really that cool with jerseys, I guess. But it was just you know the player that. Um, but I'd say one of the coolest jerseys I think the black um, Chicago Bulls one, the black uh, Jordan jersey that was that was always a pretty cool one. Yep, absolutely. Well, Jared, I can't thank you enough, and I'm um, gonna say good luck to you in the draft. Uh, I was, I'll be out there, so, but I know you'll be home enjoying it, and uh, I hope you get some time to enjoy the summer, and I uh, hope you get selected. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks so much. All right, take care. All right, All right bye. Everybody, that was Jared Bergen from Wisconsin, six foot ten, an NBA draft prospect.